Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, this time I'm looking at um, reprogramming a Nano Swinset actually. Uh, you can see what I've got in my hands here is uh, one of these AVR programmers. Um, I forgot what they call is it? Uh, USB ASP V2. You can see that, it's not focusing very well. But yeah, you plug that into the USB port there, and it's got the programming header coming off. You've got a jump here for 3.3 volts or 5 volts, depending on what your uh, device is that you're trying to program, I think. Um, and then I've got these little uh, adapters for the end here. Uh, obviously, I need to get that around the right way, but uh, it's that way, isn't it? It's keyed. Um, you can probably just about see there. I'm not sure if it's focusing very well at all, but you've got Mozzie uh, MI SONC reset, SCK, MISO, ground, 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 VCC. Um, but obviously it translates them for some, to some different pins on here. I think on this, this side you've got VCC, Mozzie, ground, um, MISO, SCK, reset. So anyway, um, I've come with this adapter because the Nano Swin since I've got, I've got um, the little six pin header, well the header's missing, I'll show you that now actually. Here you go. So you can see the three Nano Swinsons that I've got here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, these two have got a six pin header there. That one's got the, the small in line one. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to work out which pin's which. I could do some continuity tests to the um, those at, at Mel, uh, at Megas, whatever they are, as 88s. So I might be able to tell that way. Um, might also just be able to determine which one's the ground based on the um, the dip, you know, socket side there, uh, and that might be enough because I'm assuming they're just going to have gone with the standard designation there. So you know that'll just connect to the pin header once I've soldered a pin header on there. So I'll take one of these ones here now and stick a pin header on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the Lazy Jones. Um, fix on, on there um, and we'll try that out but I've also got some um, ultimate nano uh, Swinsids on the way um, might be a month or two before those arrive yet because I think he's the chap who does them and still manufacture them so I'll cover that in a video in its own right when that arrives that'll be interesting um, but right now yeah I'm going to solder a pin header on there and we'll give it a try so I just thought to show you here how I've worked out where the ground is and where the VCC is um, Looking at the adapter here, you're not going to be able to see it very well because of the, it's just not going to focus, I don't think it's too small. But um, on this side here, we've got VCC, you'll have to take my word for it if you can't read it, VCC there and then ground. So I'm assuming it goes this way, like that, onto the adapter. Um, so that would make this connection here ground and that one VCC. So in order to confirm that, if we do the ground one first, the bottom right pin, um, you can see I'm testing with the black probe there. The bottom pin you know there's your notch that's pin one on the dip side um, so versus the dip socket we've got a ground there that's right which should mean that the fourth pin down here um, on the right hand side goes to that top right hand corner and that's right so that's where the VCC is going so I can now now I've confirmed that the VCC and ground are in our places we can probably assume that the other um, pins there for the communication channel are going to be correct so I can just solder that on there we go, the pinhead is soldered on uh, in place there now, now so um, should be able to connect this up uh, that way around so that VCC lets us has this top right hand corner, ground is the bottom right hand corner facing me, um, plug that in, um, should be able to connect this up to my uh, PC now by the USB side um, and run the AVR probing software and hopefully you should be able to see this device and I'm hoping it's not got the fuses set in such a way that you can't reprogram it. I don't even know whether you can do that, this is my first time looking at these chips so you might um, you might not be able to stop them from being you know uh, sort of right protect them effectively. I'm hoping it, you know like I say we'll be able to reprogram that. The alternative of course is you could just order another um, AT, at mega 88 or whatever it is and just remove that chip stick a new one on I can't imagine they're going to be particularly expensive but yeah I'll plug that in and we'll give it a go so here we go sorry the camera's a little bit wobbly here um, we'll just connect this up now so I've got to get this the right way around um, got the ground on the bottom corner here I think in VCC at the top um, so it should be that way around I think like that so if now plug this into the USB port I've tried a couple of different programming packages here um, and this Extreme Burner seems to be the easiest one to use actually. Let's move that down a little bit so you can see a bit clearer. Uh, I'm sorry about the refresh uh, thing going on in the LCD there, the lines going down the display. 
can be avoided. I can't really do a capture of this uh, easily. Um, but if we now do chip info, um, I'll see if I can zoom just so you can see that because you're not going to be able to see it from that distance, I don't think. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. We've got, uh, and sorry, the camera is wobbling here. Uh, at Mega 88, uh, 8192 bytes in the terms of the flash size, and the EEPROM is 512 bytes. And it gives the signature there of 0A931E. Now, the interesting thing is, I was using uh, some other software and it was trying to find the chip and it kept coming back saying the signature was wrong and I think it had an A on the end instead of an E and I think this is because it's an Atmega 88P I think that's the way it comes back with a slightly different signature but in any case you can see it's read the signature there okay um, I did read this previously before I've actually programmed it once already but we'll do the same thing again if I open um, and let's just go to the right folder hang on this is the lazy fix um, so I've selected the hex file there, uh, click open, as you can see, um, <laughs> zoom a little bit, you'll be able to see the detail. <clears throat> We've got uh, the ROM loaded in there, you're looking at the hexadecimal representations of what's loaded um, into the file buffer. And then it's just simply a case of choosing right, uh, I think it's right all, uh, you'll see incorrect chip found, yeah, and that's because, like I say, it's an 88P instead of an 88, so you just click yes, continue on. I think the software, like the other one, has only got the signature in there for an 88, not an 88P. Um, and as you can see, that's all, you know, we've got green ticks and things there, all okay. Uh, close that. That's it, done. Simple as that. Um, now, I have tested this, but I'll show you again in a minute now we've freshly programmed it. That will work in the C64, and you'll be able to get the, you know, the benefits there of the, the Lazy Jones fix uh, as part of that uh, update to the Nano Swinsid firmware. So I've got the original unmodified Swin Sid in here now. Mm -hmm. you hear that? Mm -hmm. It basically keeps stopping and starting. So for now I'll put in the modified one. So this is the one I've just updated. As you can hear, it's completely different. It's uh, you know, it seems to be working all right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.